Hi guys. So today let's talk about conditional expectation. So let's uh, repeat the experiment from the last class. So we're going to take a coin and we're going to toss it three times. Okay. Uh, let's also have a stock whose value at time zero denoted by S zero is four. And every time we toss a head, the stock would double up. And every time we toss a tail, the stock would go down by half. Okay. So let's see what happened in the first coin toss. We can either get a head or we could get a tail, right? And as we said, if we get a head, the stock would double up. So it will become eight. If we get a tail, the stock would become half. So it would become two. So now we can do another coin toss. And now in the second coin toss, we can have these possible outcomes. We can have either two heads, okay? Or we could have gotten a head and then a tail and or we could have gotten a tail and then a head or we could have gotten two tails. These are the only four possible outcomes when we toss a coin two times, right? So again repeating the same thing, uh, every time we get a head we're going to double the stock up so it will become 16 here. If we get a tail it will become head tail, it will become four, right? Because it becomes half. Again, if from tail we get a head, so it becomes S2 tail head, the stock would go from 2 to 4, so that would be 4. And if we get another tail, it would become half of what it was, so it would become 1. Now we can, you know, extend this experiment for another coin toss, and let me just do that very quickly here. So we can get another head, 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 head. That would become 32. We could get a tail, head, head, tail. That would be the same as S3, head, tail, getting a head here. S3, tail, head, head. And that would basically make it 8. Or we could get S3, head, tail, tail. S3, tail, head, tail equals S3 tail tail head equals to 2 or we could get a tail 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 that would be 0 0.5 so what I've done is I basically written down all the possible outcomes here okay and the value of the stock uh, in all these possible outcomes is also listed right here okay so this is basically how we're going to define a process okay so now let's Let's basically take it a step further. Let's also define a probability measure under which probability of getting a head is half and probability of getting a tail is also half. Okay? And let's also define a time concept of time now. Let's say this is time equals zero or time equals one. This is time equals two. And this is time equals 3 and this is time equals 0 okay so what we're saying is that time 1 we have already tossed the first coin okay and we know what is the outcome either it's going to be a head or a tail by time 2 we've tossed the co coin twice and we know what is the outcome of the first two coin tosses okay it's going to be either head 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 tail tail head or tail tail but we know exactly which one of these outcomes have, uh, have have we arrived at okay at time three we know all the three outcomes we know either if we toss the head 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 or head head tail or you know all of these any one of these possible possible outcomes right so you can think about you know time as as we move forward in time we get more and more information about the coin toss right so when we are standing at time zero we haven't yet tossed any any coin and we really don't know how the coin tosses would behave, right? At time one, we know the first coin toss outcome. At time two, we know the two coin toss outcomes. And at time three, we know the outcome of three coin tosses. So as we move forward, we get more information, okay? So think of time moving forward as we getting more information in our experiment here okay and the information that we're looking at is basically what were the outcomes of our coin tosses now let's say we know that s3 is a random variable right and right now at time zero we don't really know what the value of s3 is going to be right 
it can be any one of these uh, possible values depending on how the three coin tosses behave. Now let's say we want to estimate the value of S3 okay at time 2. So please note that you know S3 is a random variable whose value depends on the three coin tosses okay. At time t2 we only know the outcome of the first two coin tosses right. We don't know how the third coin toss will behave. So we need to estimate the value of S3 at time S2. And that basically is called conditional expectation. And what is it condition on? It's, con it's based on, uh, we're gonna take the expectation of S3 condition on the information available to us at time two. And as we just discussed, the information available to us at time, at time two is you know the the results of the first two coin tosses right so in particular what we want to do is we want to find out the expected value of s3 at time 2 and the way we denote, denote that is we write a e and a subscript 2 that basically denotes that you want to calculate the value of uh, the expected value of s3 at time 2 okay but expected value of s3 at time 2 uh, we can calculate under these four possible outcomes, right? So we can, you know, we can calculate the expected value when we got the first coin, two coin tosses were head head. We could calculate the expected value of S3 at time two if the first two coin tosses were either head tail. And we can calculate expected value of S3 at time two if it was a head tail head. Or we could get expected value of S3 if it was a tail tail. Okay, so these were the four possible uh, outcomes uh, when we toss the coin two times and we need to actually get the expected value of S3 at all of these four points. Okay, so that's how we've denoted this. Now, let's take the example here that we want to calculate expected value of S3 when we got the first two coin tosses as a head head. Okay. If you're standing right here, then we know that in the next coin toss, okay, we would either be at 32 or we would be at 8. So if you got a head from here, the stock would jump up to 32 or it would go down to 8. So there were only two possible outcomes, each with the probability of half, right? So if you're standing here at head head and we wanted to get the expected value of S3, it would be the value of S3 which is 32 times, what are the probability of getting a S3? I mean, of getting a 32? It's half, right? Because we already know what the first two outcomes were, so we were already here. Now we would coin a, toss a coin again, either we would get a head or a tail. And if we got a head, we would be at 32. If we, were, we got a tail, we would be at eight. And the probability of getting a head or a tail are both half, right? So if you want to get an expected value of this, it would be 32 times half plus 8 times half. That would be 16 plus 4 equals 20, right? So very simple. Only two possible outcomes in the next coin toss. We are already standing here. So we just need to figure out what the value of the random variable is and multiply it by the probabilities. And the probability in this case is going to be just half of getting a head or a tail. Likewise, we can cal quickly calculate expected value of S3 if we got the first two coin tosses a head tail so that we are here. Now in this case we can get, we are already at four. If we get a head in the next coin toss we will be at eight. If we get a tail we would be at two. So expected value would be eight times half plus two times half equals four plus one equals five, right? And this would also be same as expected value of S3 if the first two coin tosses resulted in a tail head because if it, they were, it was a tail head we would be exactly at the same point and in the next coin toss you could either get a head uh, 8 or a 2 uh, with the probability of half half so this would be same as this okay. Now the final thing we need to calculate is we can calculate expected value of S3 if the first two coin tosses were tail tail okay we were here 
then it's we could get either a 2 with a probability of half or we could get a half with a probability of a half so it would be 1 plus 0 0.25 1.25 right so what we've done so far is basically we've calculated the expected value of s3 at time 2 okay and at time 2 we knew that we could be in either one of these four states okay and we need to calculate the expected value of s3 in all of these four states okay now keep it in mind that this expected value okay e2 of s3 i'm not going to write the coin tosses here in bracket okay e2 of s3 is is also random okay so because the this expected value depends on the first two coin tosses right if the first two coin tosses were head head then this quantity would be equal to 20 if it was a head tail or a tail head then this particular expectation would be a 5 and if we got the, a tail tail on the first two coin tosses then the expected value of s3 would be 1.25 and at time 0 we don't know if we're going to get a head head a head tail or a tail head or a tail tail in the first two coin tosses so that means that this particular expectation is random at time zero right because we really don't know and you know or how the first two coin tosses are going to behave and depending on the two coin tosses the expected value will change okay so very important thing to keep in mind that the expected value uh, of s3 at time two would be uh, would be random so like we've calculated the expected value of s3 at time two we can also calculate the expected value of s3 at time one right so let's do that next so I've I've written down the same stock process here so what we want to do now is this is time one and we want to calculate the expected value of s3 at time one so keep in mind at time one we can have either one of these two outcomes head or a tail so we want to calculate the expected value for each of these okay so we can denote that as you want to calculate the expected value at time one of a random variable s3 if the outcome was a head or we can do the same thing expected value at time one of random variable s3 if the first outcome was a tail and how are we going to do that same as what we've done here we're going to look at all the possible outcomes of uh, s3 that we can get from this point so uh, if we have already tossed the coin once we are here now there are two more coin tosses remaining and in those two coin tosses we can get either a head 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 tail tail head or a tail tail so re let's write that so if we get two more heads now what would happen to the stock price it would go to 32 so 32 times probability of a head head plus in the next two coin tosses we can get a head tail also if we get a head tail it put the stock would go to a, go to 16 then come down to 8 probability of getting a head tail or we could get a tail head that would result in stock price is 8 probability of a tail head plus we could get from here two tails and we would be down to 2 and probability of getting a tail tail and all these four probabilities are equal to 1 by 4 so this would be equal to 32 times 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 8 times 1 by 4 plus 2 times 1 by 4 equals 12 so this is 8 plus 2 times 2 point two. Likewise, if you want to calculate uh, the expected value of S3, if you were at this particular outcome, then that would again be from here we can get two heads. But if we get two heads from here, the stock would become eight, right? And probability of getting two heads from here. Plus, if we can get likewise here, we can get a head tail, but the stock would go up to four then come down to two. Probability of getting a head tail plus again probability we can get a tail head so that would be probability of a tail head plus we could get two tails like here but then the stock price would go down to 0.5 probability of two tails again this would be 8 times 1 by 4 plus 2 times 1 by 4 plus 2 times 1 by 4 plus 
times 1 by 4 this would be 3.125 okay so quite simple right so what we've done is again we basically have calculated the expected value of s3 at time 1 and it's denoted by e1 s3 either we get a head or a tail okay now also to note is again e1 of s3 is actually a random variable is a random variable why because you know if we get a head or a tail the value of this this expectation would change and at time zero we don't really know if the first coin is toys toss is going to be either a head or a tail right so if we get a head the random the expected value would be 12 and a half if we get a tail expected value would be 3.125 and it's random because we don't know how the first coin toss is going to behave right now one thing to one thing more to note is if you want to take expected value of s3 without any information which would be expected value of s3 without any information means expected value at time zero this is the same thing as expected value of s3 okay calculating the expectation without any uh, without any information uh, is Simply, is simply we can drop this uh, subscript and basically denote this by e of s3. And this expectation we've already calculated, we've learned to calculate in the previous class, right? How do we calculate expected value of any random variable? Let's say a random variable is x. Expected value of the random variable is we sum the value of x across various omegas, multiplied by its probability, and omega goes in you know, ranges within the sample space, right? So likewise, if you want to now calculate expected value of S3, we could write similarly as omega belongs to capital omega, S3 of omega times probability of omega, where omega would be any one of these values, right? Okay, that's how we calculate S3, expected value of S3. Well, one thing to note is expected value of S3 without any information doesn't depend on our, any of the coin tosses, okay? So expected value of S3 without any information, as you can see, is, you know, uh, we, we, you know, is, we basically doesn't depend on a coin toss. And so this quantity is not random. It's very important to realize this, not random variable. So when we calculated expected value of S3 at time two, and expected value of S3 at time one, both we said dependent on the coin tosses, okay? And they were random. But expected value of S3 at time zero, which we calculate like this, is not a random variable because it doesn't depend on any coin toss. And this is an extremely important concept, okay, to realize. Now, that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss uh, for conditional expectations, okay? Um, in the next class, we're gonna start talking about uh, properties of uh, conditional expectations.